If you've been told you have polycystic ovarian syndrome, PCOS, from only doing an ultrasound, I'm here to tell you that an ultrasound alone is not enough to say you have PCOS. Stephanie Young, the health teacher here, and in this video, I'll be telling you why an ultrasound alone is not enough and the complete criteria for a PCOS diagnosis. So, here's what a normal ovary looks like. You see small fluid-filled sacs called follicles. Follicles contain immature eggs, and you know what? These are also referred to as cysts. I bet you've heard of ovarian cysts before. Ovarian cysts and PCOS are two different conditions that are often confused with each other. So how are polycystic ovaries different from an ovarian cyst? In the case of polycystic ovaries, cysts are small, containing follicles with immature eggs, while ovarian cysts are very large, growing to a size where they begin to cause pain. Ovarian cysts do not affect the process of ovulation, but polycystic ovaries do affect ovulation. I needed us to understand that first before we move on. So if you've watched some of my previous videos on ovulation, I talk about the process a lot. At the beginning of the cycle, about several eggs and follicles begin to mature on the journey to ovulation. But at the end of the day, only one makes it. And as soon as ovulation occurs, the number of follicles reduces and the ovary looks normal again. So practically, seeing those little cysts on the ovaries means one of three things. One, ovulation has not happened. Two, ovulation is not happening. Three, ovulation did not happen in that particular cycle. And younger women have more follicles than older women because they have more eggs. So if you've been paying attention at this point, you are thinking, so when is it PCOS? Right? So it is PCOS when, one, there is a case of androgen excess. When all other causes of androgen excess have been ruled out, like things like hyperlactin. Now, this would be an excess of the male hormones found in a blood test. So androgens... Another name for androgens is male hormones. So women produce male hormones in the ovaries and adrenal glands, but in small amounts. It is normal, but in women with PCOS, these hormones are in excess. When we say male hormones, we're talking about hormones like testosterone, dehydroepiandrosterone sulfate, let's not bite our tongues, DHEAS for short, and androstenedione. Right. Two. Manifestation of clinical symptoms like loss of hair on the front of the head, that is male pattern hair loss, excessive hair growth on the face, neck, back, also called hirsutism, acne, weight gain around the abdomen as well. The third criteria is infrequent ovulation and irregular periods. So when I say infrequent ovulation, I mean not ovulating in every cycle. It's different from irregular periods because you can still see your periods and not ovulate. Irregular periods, on the other hand, is seeing your period like once in two months or three months or even longer than that. So women with PCOS have very long cycles. So you might not be sure if you're ovulating, right? And that's normal. It's not a big deal. A lot of women who even think they're ovulating are not ovulating. You can watch this video where I talked about five signs to confirm that a woman is not ovulating. The fourth and last criteria is the pelvic ultrasound. So a pelvic ultrasound showing multiple fluid-filled cysts around the edges of the ovary. So here in this image, you can see the difference between a normal ovary and a polycystic ovary. Here, so a quick recap. How do you know if it is really PCOS? First, androgen excess. Confirm through lab tests and or manifestation of clinical symptoms, meaning it could be one of them or both, right? So meaning a woman who has PCOS may have androgen excess and manifestation of clinical symptoms or androgen excess without manifestation of clinical symptoms, right? I hope you understand that. Then in addition, this woman still has infrequent ovulation or irregular periods before a pelvic ultrasound showing polycystic ovaries. Simple. As a matter of fact, very many years ago, when the diagnosis for PCOS began, polycystic ovaries seen on an ultrasound wasn't a criteria until later. It was defined by androgen excess. I make this video today to educate women because I've seen a lot of women misdiagnosed, sad, undergoing treatments they don't need because the ultrasound showed multiple cysts on the ovaries. 
without a test to prove androgen excess. So even if it is indeed PCOS, right, there are a list of treatment options available, but first be sure that that is the problem. Now, it will shock you to know that some women are not eating well enough to have a period. In their own case, their problem is under eating. They are not providing their body with the needed amount of calories to have a period. And the surprising fact is that when they do a pelvic ultrasound, there will be polycystic ovaries on the ultrasound. So a woman who doesn't eat enough goes and has a pelvic ultrasound done could see polycystic ovaries on that ultrasound as well. Now, the downside to this is women who have this condition from under eating, that is missed periods or irregular periods from under eating, but have seen polycystic ovaries on their ultrasound or have been told they have PCOS. Now, instead of increasing their food intake to get a period, they start cutting carbs as a means to deal with PCOS, worsening their symptoms. You know, I've also seen others who have no idea they have PCOS because their ultrasound was clear at the time when they had the test done. And for that reason, they haven't undergone any treatment and are just confused, not knowing what they're experiencing or why they're experiencing irregular periods. Unfortunately, these are the consequences of misdiagnosis. So now it's possible that you may end up doing these tests and then confirm that you do not have PCOS. What next? right? There are other tests you can do. So I'll advise you to go ahead and watch this video next where I talked about the tests to do if you have irregular periods according to the signs and symptoms a woman may experience. So if you'd like to have a consultation to discuss your tests, treatment, or other some tests, you can click the link in the description to book one. Um, the link to my free guide as well, Period Reset, a first-step process for getting your irregular periods back on track, is there as well. When it comes to the issue of treatment, you also need to know the kind of PCOS you have to get the right treatment you need. Treatment is important because the right management will prevent complications from PCOS, complications like diabetes or insulin resistance, obesity, heart disease, etc. So there are about four different types of PCOS, and this is what I'll be talking about in my next video. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't so you don't miss out.